P on Brew Wednesday, guys. Ah, uh, yes, I'm cheating. Look at the fall on that. Looks lovely, doesn't it? Yeah. I'm sorry to say, we've got all this flash gear, but no beers on tap. I've got a cider on here and a wine. So I suppose I could do the homebrew Wednesday with a, a wine or a cider, but to be honest, I've drunk my fill of both of them recently and uh, I just fancied a nice bitter. So we've got a uh, Worthington's Cream Flow. Um, this is a new can. I'm assuming it's the same ale. But, you know, you just crave for things sometimes, don't you? But don't worry. Uh, it's still going to be a homebrew orientated video. Oh, that is nice. So what we intend, what I intend to do today, is I'm gonna grab the camera, and um, you've seen my beer font, so I'm gonna give you a tour of how this setup works, and I'm gonna take you through uh, along the pipe work, and it goes outside. It's what they call a remote draw system, and it goes into a converted fridge freezer there, where I've got room for several kegs and room to put a few beers um, to chill as well so uh, obviously out of any remote draw system the most prominent and obvious part of it is the beer fonts which you've obviously seen now this is chilled you know so I've got condensation all over this thing here and um, this is pretty much all that people see in a bar and you don't get a chance to see the workings behind it so you know I've struggled for the past two months getting this set up just right so I'll put a few pictures in as well maybe before I take you or when we're finished so you can see the various stages of the process and mainly just setting this up and then we'll go outside and I'll meet you back here when we're done. So we can take a look here under the counter. Now obviously there we've got the drip tray. Now just out of view I've put a chalkboard down the middle and uh, I've got two hydrometers and they both seem to be out by two points now one of them's got a round end and one of them's got a pointy end so that just helps me uh, you know remember that whenever I measure something with one of the hydrometers anyway back to the uh, back to the direct draw system or remote draw system as it's called sorry so yeah under here where I've built this we had a radiator which we never use so I've just cladded it in it is hidden and here you can see obviously the workings of the uh oh, let's see if we can turn a light on actually i think there's a light on this thing yes so there we can see the insulated pipe that comes out of the base there we go of the taps i don't know if this will come out very well and yeah the pipe there it goes up through the wall so We'll just nip outside and we'll continue this. So here we are on the outside. Now this, it's obviously been raining here today. This is where the pipe comes out through the wall. And obviously I didn't want to dig this concrete pathway up. So what I've done is box it in. So it goes across here, across the threshold, runs along the wall, and then this here, is where we've uh, it has to come across the pathway you see so it's been sunk underneath the concrete and then there's the box where it finally enters um well the beer cellar for want of a better word so let's just unlock that and we'll go and have a look in there oh and the sun's coming out 
So here we are. Open the door. And as you can see, if you can see, it's fairly bright. So I'll come in and turn the light on. There, there's not much room in here. There we have the uh, nitro CO2 mix for the gas to carbonate and to push the beer through. And this is basically just a fridge freezer turned on its side. I had to turn the motor around to do this. There's the entrance pipe for the gases. So yeah, I turned it on its side and then we fitted it with this collar to bring it up to height. And you should be able to see, here's the pipe that comes in. Obviously that runs underneath and out through that box that you've just seen on the side wall. And the thermostat I've packed up on this fridge, so I bought a little thermostat off eBay. Pop that on there. We've obviously got lots of um, thermometers and probes everywhere just to record the temperature. So you can see it's 2.1 degrees inside. And um, this one up here is reading minus 3.5, but it is a little closer to the, uh, to the cooling elements. So if we just lift the lid, We'll be able to see our setup inside. So um, we've got in here at the minute one, two, three, four kegs, each with their own gas line and liquid line. Um, and in there we've got a Mexican cerveza, which is just cold crashing at the minute to help the sediment drop out of suspension. So we've got a few things in here. We've got a a wine carbonating, a white wine. Um, in this one at the minute is empty, but it's just got some water in it. And what we do is put the pressure on there, and you can create soda water. This one over here has got my uh, strong cider in it, which is about nine percent cider, something around that mark. And then this one here is pressurising, and this has got the. Uh, the normal strength cider in it. I did another batch and obviously you can see these two pipes here this is where the um, liquid lines all come in and they're accompanied by these two thicker pipes now these thicker pipes run down and join to some hose down there which is oh, I've just shut the light off yeah, they join to some hose down there which you can see is strapped to uh, one of the cooling elements for the freezer. Now what I did with these cooling elements was to disconnect them because they were shelves and I had to gradually sort of kink and bend them around to get them pushed to the side out of the way. You might be able to see better if I lift the lid on this one. There you can see we've got a, f um, a three way regulator on the wall there and one of those runs across to this manifold where I can uh, separate this to four different gas lines but obviously they'll all be at the same pressure so yeah here you see are the um, cooling elements which I've left one of them at the back there and these two have been pushed to the side to afford me a little bit more space inside and these two chiller pipes come round and they go into this bucket here now if I move this bottle of um, wine cooler out of the way for a moment I'll be able to show you hopefully without um, pulling any pipes out or anything should be able to show you inside here now the lids on to prevent the uh, the moisture escaping because it will just condense upon the cooling elements and there we go so in there we've got a temperature probe just to sense the temperature of the uh, coolant and then there's a pond pump in there and obviously the one with the yellow um, valve on the end that's the return line so this salt water is being constantly circulated from here along the um, beer python I think they call them where we've got the, the liquid lines that's being chilled by these two lines as well so the liquid remains chilled in the lines and then it flows up into my beer font where it cools the font and obviously that's how you get the condensation on the front of them because um, the whole font is basically chilled down to whatever temperature we've got this water at 
So yeah, that's an old corn. Well, that's how that works. So that this here is an old Cornelius um, regulator. Now I've had a few leaking issues with this fella, um, so I've had to sort of bodge it, get it working. This one in the middle hasn't got a gas line at the minute because I've been using these push fit connectors. See if I can unscrew it. I'll just show you a little bit. Yeah, these are like a John Guest push fit connector where you push your gas pipe in, but I think they're more for, um, you know, compressed air or perhaps when you're uh, for liquid lines, you know, water pipes and, and whatnot, because they just don't seem to keep a 100% gas tight seal. So uh, I'm slowly replacing them with either the, a quick fit adapter here which gives me the mains pressure gas, so this is up at 60-70 psi for carbonation uh, obviously you have to have it a little bit higher with nitrogen CO2 mix and then this one here we've got set at 29 and he runs across here into this manifold and is distributed throughout the kegs for dispensing so yeah that's what we're in the process of just bodging along with it as we go just trying to get it working well because it's uh, it's all a you know a mismatch of equipment I'm just trying to put together and make it work as cheap as possible so yeah you can see here where I've disconnected the uh, the lid mounts and taken the rubber seal off the door and I've actually put the rubber seal off the door on and stapled him and sealed as well with silicon underneath here onto my wooden frame you can see how the wooden frame is attached to the freezer internally and then all I've done is just put the lids up and the, uh, the there are metal strips along the door edges here so now this seal this magnetic seal works in reverse let me just pop this um, wine cooler back in there there's some fruit juices that we mix with the wine cooler as well. We've got like a pineapple and lime. Florida pink grapefruit, which is a little bit bitter, but when mixed with this, peach and strawberry, it makes a delicious drink. So yeah, that's my setup. There's a couple of liquid lines with no um, quick disconnects on them as yet. So yeah, that's the setup as it is in here. So um, I'll see you guys back uh, in the kitchen. So there you are, guys. So that's my setup outside. That's how it works. Um, like I said, unfortunately at the minute I don't have actually any beer on tap in there. Hence, I'm cheating with a can of Worthies. But what we do have. If I can just grab your attention for a minute, is these little fellas down here. These are what we've just brewed, well, 10, 12 days ago. So we've got a Cooper's Australian Pale Ale and two Cooper's Lagers. Now these are going to go under pressure for the next two weeks and um, they're, they're probably going to sit in this barrel for another five days just to help them clear a bit further before I put them into a corny but then they can sit in a corny keg under pressure um, for two weeks because it takes a little bit longer on the nitrogen system than it does just with the pure CO2 and then we're going to get these on tap and hopefully we'll catch some good weather because it's it's warm but it's been raining recently so uh, when these guys are ready we'll be uh, we'll, they'll be ready to rock and roll they'll be on tap okay so well that just about covers uh, my homebrew Wednesday this week so uh, We'll catch you next week guys and look forward to watching all your videos as well uh, please rate and subscribe as normal um, 
you know, leave a comment. Uh, it's encouraging to hear other people appreciating what I'm doing. So, um, cheers, guys. Happy Homebrew Wednesday. Uh, catch you next week.